First of all, it's a deep honor for me to be with you, Dr. Nader. And I have been working with the media for over 40 years, and so when I knew I was gonna have this opportunity to sit with you, I called up some reporter friends from the New York Times and the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal and ABC News, and I said, if you had a chance to ask a question of Dr. Nader, what would you ask? So the first question is, people want to know who are you? Would you mind talking a little bit about yourself, about where you were born, where you went to school? I want to lead up to how you ended up doing what you're doing today. It's very interesting because um, one of the issues we have today in the world is the identification of who we are. Hmm. And when you ask people who I am, they'll give you a, a statement or an answer with a name, a nationality, maybe a belief system, maybe their education, maybe their profession. And one thing I have learned that is going to be very important in all concepts of potential solutions for our world is to know who we really are. This question, therefore, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to get an answer. I, I'll, <laughs> give you the, I'll give you the, the outer aspect <laughs> yeah. of it, but the big it's, picture. it's yeah. such a very important question for us to realize that we really are the transcendental pure being within the self. All great traditions in the world have guided us towards that. Know thyself, know, know the kingdom of heaven within, which is within you. And even science pointing out to what are things, what are objects, what are people ultimately, and find that we are one unified field, unbounded ocean of pure being within. So how did you come to know that? So here we are now. You obviously learned this over time, yes. <laughs> going back. Yeah, of course, I have known myself and started to know myself like everyone else, being born in a specific situation and condition. In my case, it was in a pious Catholic uh, family, uh, religious, and I was sent to a French school, which is a Jesuit school, where there was a lot of emphasis on divinity and God and religion, and also studying the Torah, the ancient testament, what they could call it, or the New Testament, which is the modern Bible, and Jesus Christ, and all the values that it, it gives. I grew in a condition also which is very special. As soon as I finished my schooling, there was a big war that... Uh, Where, what country? In Lebanon. Oh, Lebanon. It was, that was, you know, exploded, a civil war between Christians and Muslims. At the same time, I went to medical school in a place in the city which was really surrounded or within the heart of a Muslim community, which is actually the American University of mm -hmm. Beirut. It happens to be in the Muslim community. And I got to meet friends and people who really are Muslim and great, wonderful people with great ideals and they became colleagues and friends and that got me interested to also look at the Quran and study Islam and a little bit on the, on the surface or not really in great depths and got to know this confrontation between culture and belief and belief system. So after I did my medical schools, I did some psychiatry and internal medicine and then I learned Transcendental Meditation during this period. Before we get to that, I'm just curious. So you were studying religion, and now you went to medical school. What was it in you? Do you mind, what was it in you that said, okay, I have that understanding, now I want to understand the body? Yeah, religion was part of what I was given to be the supreme knowledge, the supreme knowledge given by the divine, which is supreme in terms of human behavior in terms of ability to, to do things properly in accordance with what one called the laws that are the laws of life. So one wants to do things right. And then what you see is that there are different concepts of what is right, different values, different cultures. And when you are born in some place, you believe that's the one and the only one. And then you start to compare and see why God did this and doesn't do that. So one of my motivations is to understand the human being, ultimately. What makes us believe what we believe? What makes us understand things in one way, <clears throat> whereas others understand things in another way, and actually see that people are willing to die and kill for their beliefs, for their God, which seems as if there are many gods, although they believe in one God, but 
their God is the one that is right and your God is the one that is wrong and I have to do what my God says and I have to confront you. And even with the basis of great ideals and beautiful intentions, you end up on the active level with huge conflicts and problems. So I was interested to see what's, what is going on in this machine, oh, which is body. our human body and human brain, that makes us do what we do, desire what we desire, and achieve what we achieve. So that's why you moved into psychiatry, to sort of more of an understanding. Yes, I, uh, the human body was a basis for understanding and the human brain, so I studied some psychiatry. I didn't get too much into it because it was mostly related to great pathological aspects of the human brain and, and nervous system and mind. And I wanted to understand actually the basics of the human physiology first, not that there are some chemicals that went wrong. We can understand that when the machine goes wrong, it doesn't work properly. So that is basically uh, a profession and a, and a wonderful vocation, but it was not my main aim. So I did some internal medicine and psychiatry, and then um, I had learned transcendental meditation How come? at that time. What year was that? Well, that was in 1975 or so. Okay. Do you mind me interrupting here? No, okay. of course. <laughs> so 1975, there wasn't that much research on transcendental meditation. You're a, a medical student. What, what was it? What did you hear when someone, how, tell me the story of how you learned Transcendental Meditation and why you learned it. 